Hi guys, good morning. Welcome back to the new video. Oh God, this problem. Um, we have seen this kind of problem many times earlier. So firstly, pause this video. Try by yourself. You should be able to do it. If not, then at least a bit logic, a bit hint, or a bit intuition should be able to come up from this. Whatsoever you have come up, just bring it on the table and then watch this video. Cool. Uh, let's give you a problem. You are given a generation DJ array called as cost. So basically, cost is the cost of hiring the IETH worker. And what I want to, I want to hire exactly K workers. Now, in K sessions, I hire exactly one worker basically in one session. I am hiring one worker. And what happens in this hiring is I have this workers list. I'll choose candidate number of workers from the start and from the end. From let's say, let's say, let's take example. I have the candidates as two. So I will take the candidate workers from this cost array. I will take the starting two workers and ending two workers. And out of those all workers, which means one, two, three, and four, I will choose the minimum cost worker. Okay, I'll choose this. After choosing starting two, ending two, the minimum cost one will be the one having the cost one right so you choose that worker now as when it is done i have to remove this worker okay now this worker is removed now on the next iteration in the next session i will choose again the starting to workers and the ending to workers here you saw that okay one was already gone so any ending, ending to workers will cost will be seven and two right now again i have to choose the minimum cost worker here the minimum cost worker will be two and two both both are same but when both are same so you have to choose the left one that is fixed okay if the both are same i have to choose the left one right now see why i'm doing um why the video is be being so early it's because i have to leave for office at seven so that's the reason i have to wake up early i haven't got all the stuff cool uh there are fewer than candidates workers so basically if let's say in the list of workers i have let's say just the four workers um right let's say one two three and four but my candidate value let's say is saying five so by this chance i have to take a five from the starting and five from the end but in total i have only four workers so i can't repeat the workers when i say starting in the end so it can be okay just take those four workers in this case also if let's say i would have asked you hey the workers are let's say six five and six still if my candidate is five so you will choose starting five and ending five but ending five okay it's already done right so you will just choose the whatsoever is remaining that is the reason it is just saying if the fewer than candidate remaining workers are there then choose the workers with the lowest cost among them like which means you have to choose every worker exactly once right every every worker can be chosen once only now i have to tell okay what is the cost to hire exactly k workers i have this workers i have this cost list i can at one session I can choose starting K ending, sorry, starting candidates, ending candidates, and then from that I choose the minimum cost. And I have to repeat this process K times. And ultimately, what is the cost remaining? I have to see it. By seeing the simple example itself, we can get it clear that okay, my um candidates are four, my array is this. So I will choose the starting four ending four then choose the minimum cost okay minimum cost one is two just grab it out okay i have added two in my cost okay two in my cost it as i added now again starting i have to again stretch it to four right because starting i have to choose the length as candidates as until it is possible just stretch the length cool i again stretch the length and got that as okay the next number as two was gone so the next number can come in so next number can come in simply and simply i will have the remaining range now from this left and right what is the minimum okay two is the minimum so simply grab that two cost now okay when it is gone now can you stretch this right range no because the range was already fixed like already completed up till the number seven so you cannot so okay cool no worries now you can simply so this point came in picture if we if we don't have more candidates cool whatsoever candidates you have just continue with them cool i continue with those candidates which i have again i have to choose the minimum cost from this range and from this range as you can see the minimum cost is seven so i choose the number seven as my three workers are three sessions are completed I will just add a sorry lastly I add a 7 the cost is in total 11 let's take the next example if we have the cost as 3 candidates as 3 from starting I'll choose 3 and choose 3 starting choose 3 but n oh only one is remaining I can't choose 3 cool no worries I'll just choose this now I will choose the minimum cost okay minimum cost is 1 minimum cost is 1 itself right and right, right also minimum cost is 1 but 
it was set. If the costs are same, please choose the left one. Okay, I'll choose the left one. Cool. Left one is gone. Now again, I can't expand the left range. Cool, no worries. Just continue with that range itself. Again, minimum cost. Okay, it's one now. Just grab this one. I can't expand the range. Just cool, no worries. So one plus one so far. Now in the in the last time, because I have to do three sessions. In the last session, I will just grab a two and simply is my answer of four. So you saw at every session, at every session, you are choosing a minimum value. So you have you have to just push in the candidates value from the left, the candidates value to the right in some of your data structure and then get the minimum value out in the least possible time. You can simply use either a multi set or a priority queue or maybe a tree set. But it's up to you that what you have to use. Simply when we have to choose a minimum and maximum value in least time, we generally use a priority queue or a main heap. So Although in standardly priority queues are max heap, so to convert to use the main heap, you have to transform a code a little bit. But yeah, we will see that little bit part. But yeah, we'll simply use a min heap to actually grab the minimum cost value. Now, as we saw that okay, we have to choose between left and right. Was what if the left and right have the same value? So I have to know okay, I have to choose from the left itself and not from the right. So choose from the left and right. Okay, I have to choose minimum value. It, it, it is a first condition, but then the next condition was to choose from the left itself. So either I can have two priority queues, which means left and right, or I can use a simple pair of priority queue, which means, okay, that pair first value will store the value itself because I have to firstly like think from the value, okay, it should have minimum value. And then if the values are same, then I need to grab the value which has the minimum index, which is from the left itself. So I can either take a priority queue, which is value to index, as a pair and choose the one which has a minimum value and the minimum index else i can just choose to take two priority queues which is left and right priority queue and then choose if the values of both the priority queues are same i'll choose the value from the left priority queue itself so i can go either ways but yeah i have to grab the minimum value and when the minimum value is grabbed it should be from the if if both are same then it should be from the left itself and that is all the entire question itself it's very 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 easy what i have to do simply simply i just initialized priority queue pq1 and pq2 pq1 is for the left pq2 is for the right priority queue now to have see in standard the priority queue is initialized okay int but to make that as a min heap i just added this particular line that's it that's it cool um then i have my count to see okay how many sessions has been done so far then i have my i and j because as you saw i have to go on if i have this particular list right i have to go on i and j from the end i have to go on and as you saw that okay i can't count the same worker twice so okay if the worker is up till here so i have to make sure okay I am counting all the I's and J. So I will just make sure, okay, I and J are moving like this. So basically a two pointer kind of thing is also a main picture. Okay, I and J are moving like this and they should not overlap each other. So basically I should always be less than or equal to J. It should not be the case, okay, I is more than J because they can't overlap. Okay, until they are same, they can go. They can go at each other. Cool. Um, so basically I've used an I and J to actually push in the cost of those workers. So firstly, as my count is less than k because i can apply i can do more sessions i'll simply use a priority queue i'll say okay if that priority queue size is less than the candidates until it is less i'll keep on pushing the elements from the right sorry from the left and how to know until when to keep on pushing until it is less than my equal to my j i can keep on pushing and then pushing that value and then also updating the i for the next value to push in in my left priority queue, which is pq1 and i'll keep on pushing until its size is less than equal to less than my candidate so that it will become equal to my candidate size and also please make sure that you will do less than equal to j why it is equal to rn it is because okay if you had to reach up till here okay you know that your left range is up till here so you will do i then i plus plus will go here then i plus plus will go here then i plus plus will go here right so i will land here ultimately now if you had a j so you have to do okay j okay j plus plus is here still you have to push in this value of j because i is just incremented it just incremented the value for the later use and it's not pushing that value so i 
has already been forward so you can't do okay i is less than j because i is already forward but it is not counted so just count that value for j itself so that's the reason i just counted that value for j itself in when i am iterating for j itself that's the reason I took i is less than equal to j because i will point forward later that's the reason later in the point i just took j is greater than equal to i as soon as okay it is taken then j will again reduce now it has become unequal so all these elements will have gone to the right all these have gone to the left cool um then similarly i did the same stuff for pushing the elements in my right just until my candidates is not filled for pq2 and also if my j is more than equal to i i'll keep on pushing those and also reducing my value of j now when it is out of these two loops this means my pq1 and pq2 are filled or either my entire i and j have become overlapped each other now i will just simply grab the minimum from left which is pq1 i'll just grab the minimum from the left if uh, pq1 is finished entirely it is completed like it has it, it's it's empty then i'll simply grab an empty max because ultimately i'm concerned about the minimum value so i'm returning a default maximum value because i'm concerned about the minimum value so i will just if no value is there return the maximum value because it, it won't matter as such right so i'll just simply grab the minimum value from the left pq1 which is the left one and from the right which is pq2 now, as soon as it is done, as soon as it is done, I'll just go and ask, hey, bro, is the value less, which means the left value, the left minimum value, is it lesser than the right minimum value? If it is, good. Or if it is even equal, still, I have to choose from the left itself and not from the right. So, I'll simply choose from the left itself. And if it is not, which means the right minimum value is lesser than the left minimum value. So, simply, I'll choose from the right minimum value and ultimately if i just choose this value i will add their cost in my answer right and ultimately i'll just increase my count which means okay my one session has been done go on to the next session and ultimately this answer will have the cost whatsoever the minimum cost is there right now comes the complexity part see the complexity is very 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 simple as you saw that you will push on the k candidates k candidates each time so basically at at a session you are pushing in two into candidates number of uh, workers in that particular priority queue and that you know okay the sessions are k so at max this can be done k times so basically you are pushing in two into candidates plus k number of elements and it can in worst case it can go to n also but yeah in general we will write it although people although the most people can write it okay n log n or something like that but it's the worst case one its actual case is this two into candidates plus k elements in the priority queue and for sure at each point of time i will have a log p log of pq dot size which means uh for priority queue it is n log n what does n log n means is okay if the priority queue has n elements then for each element whatsoever the priority queue size is this n log n factor will come from that priority queue size now at each point of time its priority queue size is nothing but the same number of elements being pushed in so i'll just simply do a candidates plus k plus log of candidates plus k and for sure the space is nothing but o of candidates because at any point of time i'm pushing in at most two in the candidates number of workers in my priority queue and that's pretty much for the question i hope you guys care bye